Hi Virgo, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for August 2018. Before we jump in Virgo, I hope to see you in Astrology 101 and 102 classes. I have a fabulous sale going on and I have a video all about it to explain the hows and whys of what's going on there. But if you've been wanting to study astrology, this is absolutely your in, so I hope that you take advantage of it, okay? All right, Virgo, man, oh man, let me tell you what, I have been thinking so much about you guys, not only because it is birthday time, so happy birthday, by the way, <laughs> but because we've been in such heavy retrograde timing that it's just been a staunch reevaluation. And in the reevaluation, much of the energy has been centered in your 12th house. And Virgo, I love you and you know that I do. But I have to tell you the thing that keeps hitting me in my heart is that there is, you are your own worst enemy. Virgo, you have been, and I think you're really starting to see that in Virgo, the channeled information I got from you is that there are things that have been going on in a secret place in your life, um, in a place you've been holding on to the behavior, the thought, the pattern, the delusion, which means it's not really true. You've created truth around it. And those things, the things you refuse to see, are killing your spirit. And that is such hard information to have to tell you, but it is the only way to get free. We are in mass retrograde time. We are in mass eclipse season. That's what's going on right now. So it is the time for you to be awakening and shifting and coming to a new reality. With all of these energies happening, um, the primaries in your 12th house, I just keep thinking it is time for you to have a spiritual awakening and there is no way to do that until we get to the truth, right? The truth sets us free. Now, what's so gorgeous about that is that the energies that are happening this month also help you to not only get to the revelation of the truth, but to end up having a, a bit of a breakthrough as we get towards the end of the month, and you're prepared to take some new actions and to leap some things forward. So I'll get into all of that, but let's jump in and start to break the month down by date so that you can see what we're walking through here, okay? So first and foremost, at the beginning of the month here on the 6th, we've got um, Venus entering into the sign of Libra. So this is kicking in some harmony, some good things for your finances, some good things for romance in your second house here. But more importantly, what I think this is about with your foundations, mentally, physically, kind of doing a little bit of a crumble, I think it's putting you in a position to go, now wait a minute, what is the value of me shedding all of this old stuff about myself, these old ideas, these old beliefs, these old needs that don't actually fit my current life? What's the value? And it brings some harmony to your understanding about the value of shedding them. It's a nice boost to your self-esteem. Um, it can also be very good for um, potential jobs or just ways that you can make money. I love this for passive income money. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about here is that if you've had some things going on in a relationship, this can put a little bit of a healing salve there. That's for sure, just because the questions of sensuality and diplomacy do come to the table here for sure. Now on the seventh, we've got Uranus training retrograde in the time in the sign of Taurus. So one of the things I'm thinking for you, Virgo, with this energy being retrograde, yay, more retrograde energy, right? <laughs> in the ninth house is publishing, broadcasting, media, sales, marketing, education. Um, this could also be things of faith. First and foremost, Virgo, I really feel like for um, a great many of you, and that does not mean all, it means a great many of you, I feel like the spiritual awakening and the crumbling is leading a space to greater faith. Because faith doesn't have a lot to do with just what I believe, it has to do with what I do. Right? When I believe that the universe has got my back and I am loved and I am cherished and I am forgiven no matter what and that the universe has my very best plan in mind and it knows exactly what it's doing despite the fact that I don't have control, that's where I'm standing on faith, right? And that's very hard sometimes, Virgo, right? Because it's like, well, I don't know. I don't understand the plan. It doesn't look the way I want it to. And that can be a really good place here where Uranus is going back. And what I actually think that Uranus, our planet of individuality, uniqueness, all of this, in the retrograde, I think what it's showing you here is where is there too much of you involved in your faith, right? If the only thing you have faith in is you, that's really kind of a hard place to be because it's hard to trust the plan. You're going to want it to be your way. Now, the other things I think that that Uranian retrograde energy brings back to you 
is looking at where your creative talents lie, where you can actually be of service of the greater good and maybe you forgot that or lost yourself along the way. I believe no matter what anybody says, Uranus also makes you look at your friendship groups. It may be time for you to branch out and get some new ones that are better aligned to where you're going, okay? Now, on the 11th, we have got this new moon partial solar eclipse in the sign of Leo. Now, this is happening in your 12th house. We've also got Mercury retrograde here in the 12th house. Um, Mercury does not come out of retrograde until the 19th. So here at this new moon partial solar eclipse in this area of your chart, this really is going to bring in for you, um, Virgo, new perspective. This has got to come new perspective. I think at this particular point, it's a setup for new spiritual awakeness, which also breeds new confidence, which brings new trust. Um, all of these things and every single piece that I think you get your brand new beginning here at this new moon, because that's what we do at the new moon, right? Is we begin, we plant these seeds of intention. And with the eclipse, it's an intensity that unfolds over the next six months. So expect to be motoring through this planet with a lot more truth under your belt, a lot more honesty, and a lot more willingness to see the honesty, which allows you to have a different self-confidence as you move forward. Now, one of the other things that I'm thinking with all this Leo energy for you as well, is that this is really about finding your own heart and your own joy and your own expression. What is right for you, Virgo? What are you not saying? What are you not willing to accept? But also, where are you living very, very fully right now where just because it's what you want and what you're doing and you're motoring and you feel on fire about it where are the people who are maybe not so team virgo again look at this like you're in a position where you're gonna have to continue to look at where you're giving away your power right where you're not living in your truth and this is very much so what's happening for you this month but it's beautiful because it's all just learning it's all just learning okay now on the 12th Mars is actually, as we come into the month, retrograde, and he's retrograde in the in the sign of Aquarius as we um, begin this month, and he's traveling through the sixth house space for you. So one of the first things I'm thinking of, Virgo, I'm just kind of getting a vision for you. Some of you may have actually had body trauma, body hurts, something around your health where maybe you're physical body is taking the brunt of some energy, right? And it's kind of being reset, or maybe you're just exhausted, something around there. And I just get the vision of health and fitness. But I think that this is also the place where mental wellness comes in with Mars retrograde here. Why are you putting effort and energy into this, this form of thinking, right? Where do you need to take different actions at work to be a little bit more fulfilled? Sometimes I think that Mars um, retrograde in the sixth house can just kind of make you bleh. You know, you're just like, well, I don't know. I mean, I'll get to that eventually. But it does give us a hesitation in changing our daily routines. That is one thing for sure. And you like the plan. You're a natural sixth house energy. So you like the plan, you like the routine. And when that gets disrupted, you're not enjoying that. What I can tell you here, though, is that with all of that energy, we get to the 12th, Mars moves into Capricorn, it continues that retrograde into Capricorn, into your fifth house. So I think you actually do get a little boost of energy, and I think you also get this place where you have an acknowledgement that you're like, you know what? I maybe just need to do something a little bit different. I have to engage in things differently if I'm going to have enough joy to move around the world, if I'm going to be in a place where I can actually enjoy the people, places, and things around me. Now, again, and I've been talking about this for months with you, Virgo, the issue or the topic or the challenge or the belief around children or your childhood is on the table again. Mars is retrograde right here in the heat of that fifth. If you have things going on around or with children, it's going to be on the table. And now you've got clarity because you're clearing out some of the things you haven't been wanting to see. You know, do you have a child who um, is really brilliant and you maybe have them in a place or a position where they need to be thriving a little bit more? Um, or has, has your schedule been just so busy that maybe you've lacked being that childlike energy yourself and playing and having some joy? You're going to get able to get back on track. This piece of the retrograde, is, I think, is actually very, very good for you, okay? Now, on the 19th, Mercury comes direct, hallelujah, okay? <laughs> it's still in the sign of Leo. So in terms of communicating some things and the clarity, the clarity, Virgo, about what's been going on 
in this very secret shadow place of your life, whether it's been a secret project you've been working on, an affair you've been involved in, even if it's not a full blown affair, if there are emotional attachments that are unrealistic, I think that comes up here. Um, I love Mercury coming out of retrograde for any of our people who deal with um, elderly or children. Look at this, Virgo. The word children is back on the on the buzz for you. So it's just a wonderfully creative energy to communicate about, to make decisions about, all of that good kind of jazz, okay? And that all comes from the 12th house space, right? Where you're willing to not have it in the shadow anymore. Now, on the 23rd, the sun comes into Virgo. Hey, hey, birthday time, which is very exciting. On the 26th, we've got a full moon happening in Pisces, just your opposite. So this is a big ticket item as it comes to relationships, business relationships, friendships, partnerships, the relationship with you and you. This is one that you will begin shedding over the next six months. Okay, Virgo, because at a full moon, we end something, acknowledge something, or make a very big adjustment. This is a big shift for your month. Being in your seventh house, this could definitely, I mean, a full moon in your partnership sector is a very big emotional turning point. Mercury is now direct. Maybe you're going to make some big decisions in a relationship. Now, I tend to feel like the full moon is always very positive because whatever it's asking you to adjust or shift, it's so you can get on and you can get on the right track, right? But this could be a time where all the stuff you've been working on in this retrograde time, all these things that have been coming to light, you're really ready to take action. And I know that maybe sounds scary, but the truth will set you free. You've got another life to be living and it probably looks nothing like the plan you set up for yourself and it's the best. Okay. On the 27th, I got all excited. On the 27th, we've got Mars turning direct right here in Capricorn. I love this. This is action, energy, fire, passion, joy, children, um, investments for my investors. Now have some forward action motion. They've got some energy. They've got some, I'm gonna win in the fifth house. This is true love is here as well. So if you've lacked some romance, you've been committed for a while, um, you need some romance in your life, you need to play together, you need to express, you need to go on ahead and have some big conversations, this is a setup for yes, thank you very much. And we just begin the unwinding of allowing retrogrades to end and end and energy moving forward. And here's the big cracker on the table. Freaking Mars coming out of retrograde helps us all. So let's just celebrate that as we get ready for September, okay? Virgo, a little bit heavier truth for you this month, but I love you too much to not come into a video and tell you what's really up and what to really pay attention to, okay? All right, Virgos, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you taking advantage of the special I have for Astrology 101 and 102. It's in the description box down below or at stormygrace.com. Watch the video. It was from the live stream. It'll give you all the details all about it. Super freaking amazing learning opportunity. So I hope to see you in class, okay?